I made a video a few days ago and I asked if you guys would like us to cover IELTS because again a good number of us some of us we are struggling with IELTS and I have gotten more than 50% of you saying mama yes we should go for IELTS Hello everybody, welcome back to Accord TV and if you're checking in for the very first time, it's your mama Accord and yes, I am the immigration queen. <laughs> Please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of my content. <laughs> now, today's video is very exciting. A lot of learning education so we are starting on our IELTS series we are going to do a lot of learning huh after watching these videos there should be no reason as to why you should struggle with IELTS whether you're going for the academic version or you're going for the general version and we all know the difference some of Canadian universities ask for IELTS and some of them do not so if you're going to a university which asks for IELTS certification then you go for the academic version but if it's just for immigration purposes then you need to go for the general IELTS version now to start off this series we are going to talk about why people fail IELTS me your mama being one of them I mean listen to this I had to take this test five times five times just to understand what really IELTS is all about it costed me a lot of money but in the end it is worth it because that's why I am here and I can confidently talk about the test because I have done it and done it and done it and done it and done it again so why do people fail IELTS so people fail IELTS because of not knowing, okay? Here you are, you have decided you're going to move to Canada and then boom, you have to take IELTS test, which is just a test, testing on how well, hmm? how well you're able to speak, write, listen, and communicate in English. So you have to take the test. But then you don't have much time, okay? So you just have to book for the test and then do whatever you have to do and then go and face the test, okay? So then the day you're going for the test, especially if you're taking this test for the first time, you don't know what to expect. Like for my case, I went for the test and when I got there, it was a big hole a big hole there were so many people so many people and many people was not even a problem okay but now the idea of having security security you know with these things these things and there were quite a number of them and then the vigilators were many and then they were talking i think i just got anxious and oh my god it, it's this serious i was not thinking it could be this serious so that heavy security you need to know that when you're going for your ielts test this is a heavily heavily guarded examination especially if you're taking a test with the British Council which is basically the main organization which is giving out this test worldwide okay so security shocked me these things everywhere and so many people in vigilators and you know so yeah I would definitely say that is one of the reason you know I just started going down even before the test was put on my face like I'm here deal with me people also fail IELTS because of time management okay some of us we are very good at assuming at all this an English test and then you're like okay I speak English I've been doing English all my life hey this is one test that is actually going to surprise you because guess what I your mama I am a graduate of the University of Nairobi huh education and then again a graduate of the University of Nottingham England but still, I did this test five times just to understand how it works, okay? So your education, your being able to speak in English and all those other things, they don't really count. This test, all you need to do is just understand how it works. And here we're talking about time management, okay? So when you're going for speaking, there's time you're given. And when you're going for writing, there's time you're given and you know reading you have time so sometimes you may find that i remember the first test i ever did my uh which one was it my reading test i did not finish and then the writing one i managed to write and finished but then i didn't have time to edit my work so time management is very very serious so if you're not able to manage your time well then there's a high chance that you may not be able to finish your test and then you don't do well and for your writing paper if you write it to the end and then you don't make time to edit it then again you are at a loss okay so some of these things time management and everything you're going to go into them into details in other videos especially when we'll be focusing at specific testing areas 
People fail IELTS because you asked a question. You are asked a question and then you answer a different question. Let's say for example the writing test, okay? You're supposed to write about one specific thing. You read that question and then you, you, you end up writing about a whole different thing altogether. So just you writing or answering a different question, you're failing, you're failing. So really you have to take time and read the question, read it again and make sure that you understand. And so when you're giving answers, you're giving answers according to exactly what you asked. And this also happens when you're doing your speaking, you ask a question and then you say something different. And these are some of the things you remember after you are done with the test and then you can't go back to do corrections or anything like that, okay? So that's another reason that may see you flopping in an IELTS test. Being overconfident, you know, this character of I know, I know, I know, it's an English test, I have practiced, I know, this exam, I'm going to crush it, this test, I'm going to crush it, so then you're overconfident, and it's because you're overconfident, you're not even paying attention to what you're supposed to do, okay, you just end up doing your own things. You end up doing your own things because you are the know-it-all, the know-it-all, when the instructions are being given, up you'll be surprised, you're told. Don't talk to the person next to you. And then for some reason, your pencil falls down and then you're asking the person next to you to pick it up for you. And then you're, you're even disqualified. You fail before you even take the test. So yeah, overconfidence. You cannot be overconfident when you're taking your IELTS test. You just need to be calm, huh? And just pay attention to detail and deliver. Do what you're supposed to do, okay? People also fail IELTS because they're too anxious. They are too anxious. It's like they don't pass this test. Huh? The world is ending. The world is ending and this test you're being told. You can do it and do it. You can even do it 10 times until you get the, you know, the band that you're looking for. But of course, again, we know that if you do it so many times, it's, it's going to cost you a lot of money because one test alone is about $240. Okay. And then again, it all depends on the dollar rate. Okay. So you want to try and do it once or twice maximum. But again, why, why would you be so anxious? You know, you're supposed to do a test. You have gone to school all your life. You've gone to the university. Some of us are even PhD holders. But then when it comes to IELTS, you're panicking because you're thinking, now if I don't pass this test, I'm not going to Canada. If I don't pass this test, which could possibly be true, but it's not a matter of life and death. Huh? You cannot go into a panic mode. Panic mode! When you're supposed to be writing a test, it's English. Just take it no more. Do your best and then leave the rest to God. Just make sure your preparations and everything, everything is done. Then you're supposed to do them and then go take your test. So being too anxious, you know, panicking too much will hinder you, you know. When you panic too much, it's going to hinder your thinking ability, okay? It's going to, you are going to stop thinking and when you stop thinking, that's the end, that's the end. So just take it normal, okay? And just take the test, okay? The worst that can happen is you failing the test but you're not losing your life, okay? So just be patient with yourself and take the test. IELTS requires you to be fluent. If you're not fluent, you are going to flop in your speaking test. Okay? So when you're speaking, you're supposed to be fluent. If you're thinking, you have to think very fast in your head and just think very fast and then speak. Especially the, the, the speaking test can be very, 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 very tricky because someone may even ask you, the examiner may even ask you, why are you wearing a, an orange shirt? Why? Then you have to you have to explain to her or him why you're wearing an orange shirt, you know? So that may come as a question like, I've never thought of anyone asking me why I'm wearing a shirt with this color or anything. But at ELTS test, the speaking test, they will ask you simple, simple things. You know those questions that you're not expecting anyone to ask you? These people are going to ask you and what they're looking for is your fluency and of course how rich you are when it comes to grammar. So fluency is very, very important. If you're not fluent, hmm, speaking, if you can't speak fluently without i mean if you are if you have an issue with stammering if you are a stammer a natural stammer you're going to indicate that somewhere when you're doing your applications booking for the test and everything so they know that you are a natural stammer okay but these are the times when you're taking this test stammering just comes automatically it's not a problem it's not an issue problem but it's just coming you just start stammering you're going to flop you're going to flop so just relax be confident, trust in the Almighty, and then speak 
fluently. No stammering, no overthinking, no all this, uh, you know, forget the world, forget forget everyone else and just speak fluently like, uh, what, what's going to happen? What's the worst that can happen? You just speak the way you normally speak. You know when you call your spouse, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, wife, and then you're so fluent with them, you're speaking naturally. That's how you should go about it when you're taking your IELTS test, especially for speaking, you have to be fluent. It's not a choice. Huh? It's a requirement that you have to be fluent. If you're not, then things may start going south for you. And if you fail your speaking, so of course it drags everything else down. And this test is, it's a strange test because you, you fail in one area, then your whole whatever just goes down. Okay. People fail IELTS because they don't just understand the test. You know you're supposed to go for your IELTS because you, you know it all. You know it all. What is it? It's just English. It's just English. So I'm going to take this test. Okay. The day comes, you're going for your test. Huh? It's a listening test. But because you have no idea what happens in the listening test, you don't understand the test. You are listening. You are supposed to listen and do the writing at the same time. But now you're listening and you're just stuck there. You don't know what is happening. You're just stuck there. By the time you, you, you're waking up, the test is over. Okay, so the whole idea is you're supposed to listen and then the words they're using. Now at this point, that's when you need to understand what synonym is, what synonyms are, okay? Yeah, so this is when you really need to up your game on synonyms. Words, many words which mean the same thing, okay? So you're listening and then whatever word you hear, you interpret it, you think about another word which means like the same as that word and then you write it. So that's for listening. So if you do not have an idea that you're supposed to be thinking about synonyms and bringing words together, then you're going to flop. And that makes one of the simplest reasons why human beings actually do fail in IELTS. Lack of preparation. Huh? We are busy. We are living, you know, our lifestyles are busy. We have so many things to take care of. And this thing called social media. Some of us, we can't even function. You wake up in the morning. First thing, before you even say your morning prayer, just even try to remember to say thank you to the Almighty. The first thing you want to do is just grab your phone and then social media. So first thing in the morning, you're out in the world through the media talking and talking and talking. You're forgetting that you're supposed to take time and just practice for your IELTS. Test! But because you know, because you speak English, because you went to school for over 12, 13, 14 years, because you're a master's holder. I mean, what is it? It's not a big deal. You don't prepare for the test. And then come the day of the test. That's when you sit in the testing room. And this test, when you know what you're supposed to be doing, the time is usually very short. But for you, because you are not prepared, because you are assuming you can speak and you are assuming you can read. You are also assuming that you are good at listening because of course your doctor has not said anything. Huh? Your doctor has never told you that you have issues with your ears. So you are fine. You will listen and then you will take the test. So you don't prepare the day of the test. You sit in the testing room. That's when you start thinking about all your problems. Everyone else is answering, you know, giving out the answers. But you are thinking about your issues because now what do you do? You don't know. You, know, you, you, you can't do it because you are not ready for it. You're not ready for it. Things are thick. So one hour for you is like six hours because you don't have anything to write. You don't, you don't know what to say. So you're just thinking about the first girl you dated and then you left her, then the next one, and then the next one. And so the world just becomes, you know, a confusion arena. Or is it arena? And then you fail because of lack of preparation. You have to prepare even if it's just an IELTS test, even if it's just English. There's a reason why it is called IELTS. Last but not least, people, human beings fail in IELTS because they don't use every opportunity that they are given. Huh? You get to the testing area, you are doing speaking. And the lady, the examiner, the man or woman tells you, oh, by the way, for this test, you are free to, uh, to write, take notes, write them down, and then you can use them for your speaking. So these people are even generous enough. You are given a paper and a pen, which you can use to take note of the things that you need. So you're given that small paper. You look at it, you're given a few minutes look at it and then you start speaking on it but because because you, you are like you 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 are you are easy there, there's no problem you are smart you're clever you know what to do you take that paper you look at it instead of taking down notes you know just put it down in not not form everything that you're going to talk about so that whatever you're going to talk about things flow so you're given this topic to talk about you just look at it and then you don't write anything you don't write anything you're told time up Start talking what do you do you start talking sentence one sentence two sentence three everything gets mixed up and because you didn't write anything down you miss on the flow 
you can't flow now that's when you start fumbling you're fumbling and you're given time and you're told this is the question feel free to put down some notes and these notes what do you do you just write them in point forms in point forms and then even as you're speaking you can look at your points and you know keep the conversation flowing but you don't take advantage of that opportunity and because of that you're going to lose on you're going to waste a whole 240 dollars and maybe by the time you're sitting for that test it's probably going to be 260 dollars it's like you take the money and put it in the toilet and flash it away and then you wait again and book for another test anyways i think i've talked about everything that i need to talk about in this video please if you are not subscribed but to subscribe okay but again we take life simple because the way we normally do it here without forgetting we're keeping it positive vibes only and i'll see you all in the next one bye accord tv merchandise is now available all you need to do is just go to the shop browse and choose whatever design that pleases you and on top of this if you'd like to have a free canadian resume then you go to the resources and you come and download it from here please find the link to this website in the description of this video